Coming up on ThreatWire, will most of the world get an actually open internet? What was that statue they just put up right there? And hey, people clickjacking, it's a thing. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is ThreatWire for Monday, May the 4th, 2015. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I'd like to start with a huge thanks to everyone who has supported the relaunch of this show. We couldn't be more proud of this awesome community. If you're new to ThreatWire on the Hack5 channel, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get started. First up, Facebook declares internet.org is a platform. Now, Mark Zuckerberg to Facebook, not where I generally look for openness and clarity, but props to Zuckerberg for moving internet.org in the direction of net neutrality. Internet.org, if you're not up to speed, is a partnership between Facebook, Samsung, Ericsson, MediaTek, Nokia, Opera, and Qualcomm, essentially to bring internet to the five, five billion people in the world that don't have it. Or to quote the group directly, internet.org is a Facebook-led initiative bringing together technology leaders, nonprofits, and local communities to connect the two-thirds of the world that doesn't have internet access. That is a great quote. I love it because you know what? I want everyone to have access to the internet. But up until this morning, internet.org sounded a lot like a way to bring Facebook and a small group of chosen partners to that two-thirds of the world for free. Because look, internet.org notes it, Pretty clearly, 80% of the world's population already lives within range of a mobile signal. Instead, the biggest challenges to getting the internet to everyone are the affordability of the internet and, of course, people who are like, should I have food, should I have shelter, should I have internet, actually knowing that there's something useful for them to find on the internet. So, effectively making a chosen few services free to those 5 billion people might sound a lot like putting an Internet Explorer icon on the desktop of, say, every PC sold everywhere with Windows. It might be construed as giving certain services a competitive advantage. So, as of this morning, Zuckerberg slash Facebook says Internet.org will be open to all. Anyone who wants to participate, provided they comply by the three principles or guidelines for participation on internet.org. And they're pretty fair. One, explore the entire internet. You should develop free services that encourage the exploration of the broader internet whenever possible. Number two, efficiency. The goal is to, quote, sustainably deliver free basic internet. So keep your bandwidth demands low. Quote, websites that require high bandwidth will not be included. Services should not use VoIP, video, file transfer, high resolution photos, or high volumes of photos. Finally, three, technical specifications. Websites must be built to be optimized for browsing on both feature and smartphones and in limited bandwidth scenarios. In other words, make stuff that'll actually run in the situation it's gonna be sent to. It sounds good to me, but we're gonna have to see how it shakes down over time. If you're interested in developing for internet.org, go to internet.org slash platform if you wanna be a part of it. And when I say develop for it, I mean actually putting your services out on the internet.org platform. From the boy that ain't gonna happen in DC anytime soon department, Euronews reports that a new bronze sculpture, Anything to Say, was revealed in Berlin's Alexander Platz this weekend. Featuring Edward Snowden, Julian Assange, and Chelsea Manning standing atop chairs, creator David Dormino, he's Italian, said they have lost their freedom for the truth, so they remind us of how important it is to know the truth. The trio is joined by a fourth empty chair, presumably so you can stand up and hurl your beleaguered yelp across the rooftops in favor of internet freedom. Threat Post says Google has patched the clickjacking vulnerability. The researcher that found it says it would enable an attacker to retrieve or delete email conversations, manipulate YouTube and Google Plus accounts, and more. In the too long didn't read version, clickjacking is when something on a web page isn't what it appears to be. So when you click, say, an ad for a hair loss product, it's free, right? If I click on it, it's free. It actually clicks several layers of code that, hey, deletes everything in your Gmail account. How bad would that suck? <laughs> and almost as bad as this, uh, while we're speaking of clickjacking, Hacker News reports that Password Alert Extension, that's a new Chrome extension Google released last week, which is designed to raise the alarm when you're entering your password on the phishing site, has been circumvented by security expert Paul Moore, who, quote, easily circumvented the technology using just seven lines of simple JavaScript code. I'm pretty sure there are voices inside of Google right now going derp. And finally, from the um, you know you shouldn't leave your password on a post-it note in your monitor department. GrahamCluey.com says a BBC documentary accidentally displayed the login and password for a control terminal inside the Wessex Integrated Control Center. I believe that's above Waterloo Station, and it's kind of a big deal to me because I don't like the idea that anybody can walk up and enter in the login ID and password. Let us hope that system requires physical access, i.e. being in the room, because password three, when you get right 
right down to it, ain't much of a password if it's for somebody that's got a stack of rainbow tables. Hey, got something to say? Comment on our YouTube videos right down below and you just might get featured in a future ThreatWire episode. And before I go, really, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone who supported the show so far on patreon.com slash ThreatWire. If you find value from this and can spare a few cents an episode, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash ThreatWire. We're hoping to reach our three times a week milestone goal with a rotation of Darren Kitchen, Shannon Morris, and myself. So throughout the month of May, we're going to give you a free taste of the full Monty. Except the full Monty is not us naked, the full Monty is us doing the show three days a week. I hope you'll contribute to help us keep this coming completely independent and ad-free. And if you can't donate, a like, a share, and a subscribe goes a long way too. And you can find all our episodes, links to our social networks, and other ways to contribute right over at ThreatWire.net. With that, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'll see you out on the internet. Also, may the fourth be with you. Thank <laughs> you.